Hello everybody. Um, I decided to do this video because uh, probably some of you are unaware of the fact that I've uh, had been out of action for the past three weeks now. Uh, came home one night and uh, had a severe, severe stomach pains. Um, basically it's happened, it had happened twice. It happened like the day before and I took a Pepto-Bismol and it seemed like it kind of subsided the pain and then the next night I decided for the first time to try a um, mozzarella stick. <coughs> Worst thing anybody can ever do. Because I don't care for cheese it's, that's fried or grilled anyway. And Anyway, I went to a meeting and everybody would say, oh, try one, you'll love it. And so I did and anyway, I came home, had even worse abdominal pains than I had before. And so I tried to sleep that night and I really couldn't. I took like three Pepto-Bismols. The next morning, I just, I was in so much agony and so much in pain that I, I uh, was in the bedroom and I decided, well, I'm going to go out and I'm going to try to sit in the den area. And uh, so then my mother got up a little while later and uh, she kept saying, do you want me to call 911? I said, no, no, I don't want to call the hospital. So eventually it got to the point I said, call an ambulance. So I did, or she did. Paramedics checked me out and they said there was two possible causes. Either it was um, it was kidney stones or it was gallstones. And they said, based on your, your, your uh, body signs, we recommend you go to the hospital right now. So I told my mother, I said, we're going to drive to the hospital, we're not going on the ambulance. Because the ambulance paramedic people said, no, if you, if you have us take you, it's going to be outrageous on the price. <clears throat> so I said, no, we'll, we'll go to the hospital by our own transportation. So I got out there, and if anybody's been to an ER, you know already what it's like. You get there and you wait. Um, I was in agony. And it probably was at least an hour and a half before they finally saw me. They took some blood work from my arm, and then they said go back out and wait in the, in the ER. <clears throat> and then uh, I was in agony another 20, 25 minutes. And then uh, this is a Piedmont hospital, by the way. So they came out with a, uh, a wheelchair. And they took me back to uh, sign the paperwork and they, were, they admitted me to the hospital. And then the doctor came out right after that and told me that um, I have an inflamed pancreas, I have an acute pancreatitis, and he says, you cannot remove your gallbladder until after we get the readings down because he said my pancreas was showing 13,000. And he said, I've never seen it that high before. Never. And then, um, my liver enzymes have been high before. I've had two other bouts like this where I think I had a pancreatitis. First time it happened was in the late, late 1980s. And then the other two times were just systematically one after the other in the last three weeks. So anyway, they admitted me to the hospital. Couldn't eat anything for a week. They put me entirely on intravenous uh, sodium chloride, and that got my uh, elevated uh, pancreas readings down. And then after that, they went to uh, setting up the, uh, the surgery. They did lap laparoscopic, which means they make four incisions in your chest or in your stomach. And, and this is what's gross about it. They stretch your skin out and then go in with the device and then they actually take out your gallbladder. Thankfully, I was asleep. Of course, nobody could handle it because they have actually, they weren't being sedated. So anyway, um, I'm on IVs for a week. I lost 20 pounds in the hospital. And uh, I went into surgery about 5 o'clock. Now, here's what's ironic. When I was put into triage, which is like your preparatory surgery, a little hat on you and they shave you and all that stuff. 
Well, I'm sitting there and I'm listening to my heartbeat, bump, 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 bump like that. And um, I was listening to the nurses because they were in the other room. They're giving a party for somebody. You know, somebody's leaving the hospital. I guess they were on an internship. I was in there in the triage for almost an hour before they did the surgery. So they put the IV on me and then they start giving me the uh, kind of like a, a slight sedation so I can calm down because I was really, really nervous. And I can't think of no Lord, you know, what's going to happen to me. So I'm sitting there in triage and then I start meeting people. The anesthesiologist, she comes in and she tells me what all is happening or what's going to happen. She said, well, we're going to put you out and then we're going to put a, a, an air hose down your throat. We're going to put it straight into your lungs and then it's going to shut your whole body down and it'll breathe for you. Basically, she said it was going to be life support. That's what it is. She said, that's when we can go in and then we can do the surgery. And I'm thinking, you're going to shut my body down? You know? And then I started asking her, I was like, well, what happens if my body reacts to the anesthesia you're giving me? Well, it looks like you'll probably be in cardiac arrest and then we'll have to start doing CPR and we'll do this and that. I was like, if my body is reacting, you can't just shut the anesthesia off and say, he's reacting to this doctor, can we try something else? No, she didn't say that. She says, if your body shuts down and if you react to it, we'll just have to do something else, you know. So anyway, but I did get through it. And this is all I remember. Um, once I started reacting to what they were giving me in triage, the next thing I remember was they were lifting me off of my bed onto a metal operating table. And that's all I remember. The next thing, it's sort of like it's like your body or your time is going like this and then it stops. And then all of a sudden it starts again. And the next thing I remember was I'm uh, still in the operating room and the doctor is telling the nurses, okay, disconnect them. Uh, uh, everything went fine. I'm sorry I had to keep you guys so late tonight. It was 8 o'clock when they finished. I went into operation surgery at 5 and it was 3 hours. Four not 4 hours before they finished. So they were, he was just telling the nurses, I'm so sorry I had to keep you guys so late tonight. And I'm like, my life's on the line and you're worrying about them working overtime? So anyway, um, I was awake enough that I could ask the nurses and I asked the doctor, when are you guys going to start on the surgery? He said, it's over. You, you're going back to your room now. And I was like, what? I had no idea what time it was. So anyway, um, I asked the doctor, were there any problems? Were there any complications? No, everything went fine. Everything's great, you know. But then they took me back to the, um, to the room and uh, I remember actually before they put me in surgery, took me to surgery, I had to use a urinal three times because I'm a diabetic. So it's kind of like, oh, you know, you can't hold it, you know, so I'm sitting there using it. And uh, so anyway, when I got finished and they took me back to the room, I thought it would be all right if I went to the bathroom. Oh, no, no, you can't get up, you know. I remember I was really, really sedated, and the nurse came in, and I said, look, I need to go to the bathroom, you yeah. know. And she just kept holding my arm. You can't go anywhere, you can't, you know, and she kept throwing me practically back in my bed because I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to be moving. So anyway, I got through the first night. And then a couple of days after that, and I'm in literally a couple of days. They allowed me to start having food again. And I didn't have a bowel movement on the day that I was supposed to be released, so they held me another day. I was there a week all together. I was there a week. I had no bowel movement until Sunday morning. And, and of all sick things they had to do, they had to stick a suppository in because I could not, my bowels would not move. And, uh, Finally, I got out of the hospital, they discharged me. I've been back one time for a follow-up to see my doctor. And I still don't have firm stool. And of course, when your gallbladder is gone, you really don't have stool anymore. My physician has told me that you can take enzymes that help your pancreas create more firmness. You know, but right now, it's just kind of like, I don't even want to describe it.
describe it on this video. But it's, it's been an experience. The last time I ever had surgery of any kind, I was like uh, seven years old. And I had to go to a hospital to have um, heat sterilosis on my hands. I had severe wart infestations, and they couldn't take them off any other way in the 70s except to use heat. Burned them off. Destroyed all of my tissue in my hands. And they wrapped them in gauze, and I was like, I felt almost like I was an invisible man. Cause it had, they had gauze all the way around my hands to keep the infection away. And I had that for about uh, three weeks, I guess. And I've got a souvenir from what they did. This nail cracked after the heat treatment, so he must have damaged it somehow during the surgery. And it never healed back. So anyway, that is a souvenir I have to this day after 43 years. But other than that, the only other surgery I've had was for my wisdom teeth. That was outpatient. Went in, doctor said, we're going to put you out, cut your teeth out, put in gauze, and you can just spit all the blood out until it's gone, you know, as far as the, you know, the pus and all that stuff. And so anyway, I went in, the guy said, start counting backwards from 100. So I did. And then when I got finished counting to 97, I was out. And he woke me up. He said, uh, Mr. Garner, it's over, wake up, you know. And I'm like, oh, you know. So anyway, I couldn't drive. My mother and my father took me home, or my father did. And so I sucked everything through a straw for about a week and a half, two weeks, because I couldn't eat nothing. Then he went back in and looked at my gums. They didn't sew them up. They didn't do anything. And so after that, I was okay. That was in 1986 when I had my wisdom teeth out. One other thing, when they do the surgery for gallbladder, they put what's called um, staples. And they are staples. That was I am. People say, ah, oh, there's nothing to that. Bull crap. I went in uh, for that follow-up appointment. And she says, ah, we're going to take your staples out today. And I was like, that's nice. How are you going to do that? She's like, oh, it's easy. Nobody feels nothing. So I was like, great. I'm closing my eyes. And I did. I never looked. I never looked at her taking the staples out. So she got and all that. Every one of them pretty much came out without really much pain, except for the last one. The last two is right below your neighbor. Oh, that was agony, okay? Because she's sitting there and she's trying to cut it and you're feeling the pain. Oh, 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 you know. And so finally she got it out. That was agony. As a matter of fact, now after two weeks, three weeks, it still itches. And I know I'm not supposed to put nothing on it, so it's still just agony for me, you know. But that in a nutshell is what I've been through, folks, and that's why I haven't been able to do videos. That's why I haven't been able to say anything on YouTube. Because I've been in total agony. I've been in total um, stress, everything. And anybody that sees this video and who's had gallbladder surgery, I sure would wish y'all would leave a comment and tell me, will I ever be able to eat the things that I ate before? The doctor gives you a little dietary sheet of paper and it tells you here's what you should eat here's what you cannot eat and it doesn't say um, your bowels will get better after this morning time or nothing it doesn't say anything it just says um, you should not take a bath and that's another thing I haven't done for two weeks I haven't taken a bath yet I've taken a wash and wipe my arms down and everything but they're saying no take a bath because you know it gets an infection in there But it was an agony, okay, folks? I do not recommend anybody have a gallbladder out, and I'll tell you why. I don't think I should have had mine out. I've had it before. I had the same problem before. I got through it. The first time I went to the hospital, they gave me a series of shots in my body. But I was weak. I was woozy, but I went home. I didn't have any more problems after that. And that was not quite 30 years ago. That was like 25 years ago when I had that. And I went back to this event, and of course, it's sort of like everybody is having gallbladder surgery. 